This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This chapter deals with the concept of stakeholders. And the stakeholders in an organisation is essentially anyone who is affected or is touched by that organisation. Some definitions also say that the stakeholders are people who can, in turn, uh, influence the organisation in some way also. They can be divided into internal, connected and external. And now you need to have an idea what these are, but I don't think in the end of the day mix it's very important really. Uh, but an internal stakeholder is somebody who is within the organisation. Uh, and typically uh, here you'll be looking at uh, employees. Uh, management. And directors. These are people who spend you know, all their working days, if you like, inside the organisation. Connected uh, stakeholders uh, have uh, got some sort of con contractual really relationship with the, uh, the organisation, but are not kind of permanently inside it, permanently involved with it. So example of connected uh, stakeholders uh, can be suppliers, customers, and the bank, in other words, lenders. So not involved day to day, but obviously they have an ongoing type of relationship. And, and it's really evidence through, through contract normally. Usually within connected uh, are, are shareholders. Certainly once an organisation gets large, shareholders are not uh, involved with the organisation on a day to day basis. Ultimately they own the organisation. Uh, but they are you know, entitled to vote at the AGM, they're entitled to dividends, but they're not as intimately involved with the organisation as the internal stakeholders. And finally, we have external uh, stakeholders, people with no contractual relationship at all, really. Uh, for example, the local people. Uh, usually government is put in here. Uh, competitors. So if you think of uh, the local people, how, how come they are a stakeholder? Well, if there's a large factory at the end of your road, uh, and uh, this means that a lorry is going up and down the road to and from the factory, in front of your, your house, your apartment, then, then you are being affected by that organisation. You don't have any contractual relationship with it, but inevitably you're affected. Similarly, government. Uh, government is usually put in external. Government, of course, uh, hopes that the organisation will employ people, hopes the organisation will make profits and pay tax. Competitors don't have a contractual relationship, uh, but they would uh, be affected, obviously, by any new products you make, uh, or, or indeed, of course, they would be affected by any uh, illegal steps you, you, you took uh, to um, gain advantage on them and, and, and so on. So these are the internal, connected, external. You have to, for the exam, say, you know, be able to say uh, an employee is, is internal, uh, 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 the bank is connected and so on. You may have to kind of match them up in some way. Now, why is it important to, to study uh, stakeholders? Uh, and it's important to study stakeholders because um, very frequently they want different things. And, and there's a conflict and we can't please all of the people all of the time. So, for example, employees want bigger wages, uh, but shareholders want bigger dividends. Uh, the local people might want there to be no disturbance of their peace and quiet. Uh, yet, of course, the, 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 the management, for example, uh, might like uh, them to be able to go 24 hours a day up and down the road with their lorries delivering material. Or if you were looking after uh, uh, um, an airfield, uh, say an airport, uh, then you would 
uh, perhaps as a manager, you might want there to be 24 hour operations on the uh, the airport. Uh, but obviously the, the local people are going to be fairly irritated by large jets taking off and landing at three in the morning. Now, if you can't please all of the people all of the time, there's going to be a conflict going on. Uh, and it, it's inevitable that there's going to be a bit of a conflict. It doesn't mean that management has made an error in this conflict, but management does has to manage it uh, and, and try and keep most people reasonably happy most of the time, if, even if they can't do it completely happy all of the time. Now, the only um, other real tool or model dealing with stakeholders is Mendeloff's matrix. And this sets out for each stakeholder power and the level of interest. So power is, is you know, how much you could actually influence the organization. Your level of interest is really saying whether you are likely to be fairly uh, passive or active uh, in relationship to uh, something happening or not happening, which you like or don't like and so on. So if level of interest is high, then you're likely to be a uh, very active, make lots of fuss, try and do things. If your level of interest is very low in it, then you'd be a much more, more kind of passive person. So what are the, the names of the four categories we have here? So if you have high power and high interest, then you're what's called a key player. You have the power, and because you're active, you will use your power to get your own way. Uh, and by and large, management has to watch these people very carefully, and very often these people get exactly what they want. So examples of key players we've had in the past uh, would be airline, cabin attendants, So cabin staff on airlines. Airline uh, aircraft are not allowed to uh, fly without the required number of cabin attendants to man the doors and so on in case there's uh, some sort of emergency. They are, they obviously have some training in that, but they're not spectacularly highly skilled. Uh, and, uh, and, and very often they were members of very militant unions. Uh, and this meant that for some airlines, the cabin attendants um, uh, would simply go on strike every August or something in the busy season uh, until they got, got a pay rise. Uh, and in some airlines, you know, their, their wages and salaries were way above, if you like, what you might reasonably expect uh, for perhaps the, the sort of job they were actually doing. They had to, they, they were able to hold their employer to ransom, really. Next, uh, we have people with high power, but who are relatively uh, passive, and relatively reluctant to take action. And perhaps an example of this, and what you have to do with these people, is keep set aside. Would be perhaps nurses. So nurses in hospitals, certainly in the UK, uh, their uh, ethical and moral uh, standards, their kindness, if you like, uh, meant that they are very reluctant uh, to say go on strike because that would mean that patients were suffering. So for that reason, uh, they're fairly passive. Obviously, they have high power because if they did go on strike, the the hospital simply couldn't couldn't cope, couldn't couldn't deal with patients and so on. So there's a potential of very high power there, which they didn't uh, ever exercise. This meant that they were kept satisfied by really being given fairly low pay rises, just about maybe keeping up with inflation and and so on. You have to keep them satisfied. If you if you go too far, if you're really unfair on these people, you may actually provoke some sort of action up here. You know, at some point people will turn and they will become active rather than passive. But for a long time, these people can be kind of, if not kept happy, 
uh, at least kept working uh, at, a, at a much lower reward, if you like, than the key players. Then we have people uh, up uh, here who've got a high level of interest, uh, but have no power. And these are the people that you keep informed. So uh, an example maybe of keep informed here uh, in the UK, whenever say a new uh, railway or a new airport runway, or perhaps a new road is planned, uh, lots of local people uh, are very, very concerned with this. Uh, it may mean that the a new um, railway line goes very close to the house and they're worried about the noise, etc, etc. There are a lot of people who are extremely worked up about it, uh, very active, high level of interest. But by and large, the, the amount of power they have is relatively limited. There are obviously legal challenges you can go through. But once they've all gone through and the planning permission has been given, uh, you know, that's kind of the end of it. It can go on to, to, to direct action, you know, people sitting in the way of the bulldozers and so on. But, but again, that, that's usually dealt with by the, um, the, the, the police and so on. You keep them informed. First of all, it is polite and there's no point in provoking them more than necessary uh, by, by kind of showing them disdain. And secondly, by keeping them informed, what's actually going to happen may be less serious, less bothersome than what they fear is going to happen. Uh, so keep them up to date with what's happening so that they, they know whether or not it's really worth making a fuss or, or, or what's going on. And finally, we have low level of interest, low power. Uh, normally what this is regarded as is minimal effort. Minimal effort is almost a polite way of saying ignore. They haven't any power and they're not interested anyway. So what are they going to do? They're not going to make a fuss of any sort. Examples of people who may come into that category, uh, people who are unskilled. In a way, it gives you low power. If you're unskilled, there are plenty of people who can replace you very quickly. And you may have low interest uh, if uh, you're not looking for a particular career in the organization. You take a lot of casual work on, really. So uh, whatever the organization does, if you don't like it, you just kind of move on. Uh, to, to, to somewhere that you, you prefer and so on, but, but you, you're not going to create any sort of fuss. Key players, you have to watch them. They're in a way at the front of the queue in getting what they want. Minimal effort, you can kind of ignore them. They're at the back of the queue when it comes to uh, uh, deciding how the organization should respond to their requirements. The ones with low level of interest and high power, you can keep them kind of ticking over, if you like, by keeping them satisfied without provoking them to become activists. And those with high interest but low power, be polite, keep them informed. Don't uh, cause rumours, if you like, to uh, uh, arise unnecessarily uh, because they've been kept in the dark. And management must learn, if you like, how to play these people off, really, how to divide up the the cake, if you like, how much salary to give to the employees, how much dividend to give to the shareholders, how much salary to give to the uh, cabin attendants and so on uh, on the aeroplane, to try and keep most people kind of happy most of the time. <laughs>